locked up and no longer in use, a mosque in the southern town of Eslu that was burned out in a series of arson attacks which forced the Swedish government to promise to combat Islamophobia. Somebody broke the window and then poured something out, maybe gas or something, and then just set it on fire, and that's how the whole fire spread in this area here. My reaction was like, who, who, who would do something like this? And, and many of the congregational members, they, they as well, you know, they asked these questions, and we, di didn't even get, we didn't really get answers, so I think this is something that we need to look more deep into. Sweden has some extremist groups who flaunt neo-Nazi symbols. While the police haven't directly accused them of the arson attacks, they're certainly under suspicion. They are vigorously anti-Islam and have tried to stop the building of mosques by claiming that Sweden would sound like the Middle East. It's becoming now the perfect storm where the system has difficulty in coping uh, in terms of, of, of immigration. At the same time, we have a more strident racist uh, collection of different groups that are becoming more active and more um, violent as well. The arson attacks led to a series of anti-racism demonstrations by people anxious to prove that Sweden remains a bastion of tolerance that can afford to grant citizenship to 100,000 asylum seekers a year. I'm uh, certain we can make it because uh, when we had a war in former Yugoslavia we had uh, the same amount of refugees coming to Sweden and uh, short time perspective of course it was a challenge but long time perspective we can see that we have actually benefited from the immigration. Immigration is now the biggest issue in a country that prides itself on offering a lifeboat to more refugees than any other European nation. Sweden is at a crossroads. It's possibly undergoing the biggest social transformation in recent history by increasing its population at the rate of 1% a year by admitting so many refugees from Syria and Iraq. These two young politicians question Sweden's immigration policy and accuse the government of trying to stifle debate on the issue. But since the mainstream parties forged an alliance aimed at isolating the right-wing Sweden Democrats and their anti-immigrant policies, their poll numbers have risen. We are losing our country, of course. That's what's happening. We, uh, we can't see it in the large cities how we are not one group. We are becoming different minorities. The big issues I see is uh, segregation uh, and I see a lot of people who doesn't come into the society, come in, in the system, we have huge unemployment, uh, we have a lot of people that uh, don't know the language which makes it difficult both for jobs and healthcare and everything in a society. <laughs> The Muslims on the other side of Eslu are using temporary accommodation to pray and to spread the word against extremism and in favor of integration. We come here to seek trygghet and the minst that we can do as Muslims is that we show these people what Islam lär us. Islam lär us, as Imam has said, that we first and foremost should have a good word between each other. Sverige is our homeland. Our homeland is not the only that we are born in or that our children come from. The imam is planning to launch a website to counter the propaganda of radicals in favor of the Islamic State organization. Islam is against it and our imams in Sweden are showing their view. But the thing is, it takes time and we don't have the resources. Because these groups, they are backed up with, with a lot of money and they have their videos, they have their websites. So it takes time. What sort of resources do you think you need? We need the support of government, that the government steps in and maybe supports us for our projects, supports us uh, you know, with ideas or maybe protection, because it is a matter of, of safety as well. Because when, when, you, when you go out there in public and condemn them, it's, you are becoming uh, a target. Are you afraid for your life? Afraid and afraid. I mean, <laughs> I'm a target <laughs> despite which group is uh, not liking me. But of course, when you receive threats, you, you become worried because you never know when they might show up. The collection is for the rent. And as they struggle to pay the bills after the arson attack, what chance do these moderate Muslims have of financing a fight against the extremists?